Look, I want to play you a clip. This is you talking to Joe Rogan about vegans. If you want to save animals, um, I, I never seen, I've never seen anyone say, save the leeches. No, or, no or one cares about bugs. Save the ticks. And you can ask, if you're really into animals and don't want to kill them, if you heard that ticks were endangered, would you start a movement to protect ticks? Would you do that? And if you would, uh, more power to you. But I'm thinking you're not. They're not. It's the little guys they don't care about. I've had this debate <laughs> with vegans. I had one last week. I have it every month. And I always point out, most vegans I know munch away on almonds and avocados and they turn a blind eye to the fact that this causes the mass murder of billions of bees, mainly in California. They don't want to have that debate because they don't care about the little guys, Neil. <laughs> my, my, my only reaction there is um, that comment was addressing only vegans who are vegans because they don't want to kill animals. Yes, no, there I agree. Other reasons to be vegan. Of course. Right, for the health or the environment. No, no, I'm talking specifically about the, kill... the ones who run into steakhouses playing sounds of cows being slaughtered. They're the ones that munch avocados and almonds, invariably. Yeah, and by the way, and they are dining upon the reproductive organs of plants. That's yes. kind of weird. And I imagine if if an if a if a plant-based alien visited Earth, they would freak out when they saw vegetarians. Yes. <laughs> because the vegetarians would be eating them, right? And 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 vegetarians target um, not only the reproductive organs, the nuts, the berries, the flowers, but they also target the infant versions of it with baby lettuce baby carrots baby oh my this is God. this would terrify a plant-based alien so that's just a cosmic perspective on that no diet. no you've I, given me all. you have I, given I, me a whole new line of attack the the, the flower <laughs> babies i love it this is fantastic uh i i, I just they i find these that's wait, that's dangerous if, if it's dangerous to feed you more lines of attack because i don't know what you're going to do with it <laughs> no, but i always like to take these things to their lo debates to their logical end right i mean and it seems to me they when it suits them they care about the bigger animals the cuddly ones but when it comes to the little guys the, they're not interested um now, I want to talk yeah, about the furry, something... the furry ones especially. Something even more iconic, actually, than God or vegans, and it's your moustache, which has become one of the world's most famous moustaches. And here's the extraordinary. There's a whole website that's been set up called DeGrasse Tyson's Moustache. And <laughs> we did a bit of research ourselves, a bit of scientific research, uh, and there's a, a, a moustache montage that we have here, which is quite extraordinary. It, it turns out almost every brilliant scientist has had a magnificent tash. Uh, Nikola Tesla, the inventor extraordinaire, oh. great tash. Louis de Broglie, the discovered the wave-like nature of all matter, great tash. Hans Geiger, famous for the Geiger counter. Robert H. Goddard built the first liquid-fueled uh, rocket. And, of course, Albert Einstein, probably the one nearest to your own. Um, you, I mean, you've become the modern-day godfather of science moustaches, but very much <laughs> running in a sort of a, a great, long, historic list of great tashes. I, 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 I'd never thought about it. Th this moustache, I've never shaved it in my life. Yes, I've trimmed it, but it's ever since I could grow a moustache... I've had a mustache, so uh, <laughs> it's just part of my life. And even it was kind of out of style a few years ago. And I, so I was a little bit, I did get rid of my mutton chop sideburns. <laughs> I figured, okay, that's from 1978. I could lose those, but I, I did keep the mustache. But if I were to vote among those mustaches, yes. I would say, you know, we remember Einstein as this wire haired, yes. you know, gray, big bushy eyebrows, but he, he was a dashing young man. He you was. see him in a tuxedo. Uh, yes, look at that mustache. That's like a Magnum PI mustache right there. If you could, final so, question, Neil. If you could have dinner tonight with any scientist in the history of recorded mankind, who would it be? Yeah, it would be, oh, no question about it, Isaac Newton. But I think about that all the time, and I'd say, Isaac, come for dinner. And he'd look out the window, and he'd see these things moving. he said, what are those? And I'd say, well, they're horse-drawn carriages without a horse. he said, well, how do they move? Well, they use gasoline. What's gasoline? Oh, it's fossil fuels. What's fossil fuels? And after five minutes of this, i say, go back to where you <laughs> came from. <laughs> also, unfortunately, your because answer... there's so much that has happened since then. Well, your answer is completely... I don't killed... know if I have the patience. Well, you killed my 
my theory also because Isaac Newton famously was clean shaven. Oh, <laughs> well, um, Newton, we, we see him with these big locks of curls, but I think that was actually a wig on top of much shorter hair. Huh? And the statue of him in Cambridge, at the, in the, a tr Trinity in, a church in Cambridge, mm. um, it's, you, you, shoot, you see him with short hair. Wow. So I was so disappointed when I heard of that, yeah. <laughs> Neil, I could honestly interview you every single day and it would never get boring. You've got a fantastic way of bringing this stuff to life. To infinity and beyond, a journey of cosmic discovery. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Lindsay Walker. It's a number one New York Times bestseller, as all your books are. It's a fantastic reading. Great to have you back in Uncensored. Thank you.